Okay, so up next, we have the team of Nish, James, and Alex. And this team was really, really excited to, to work on a web game that quickly became a cohort favorite. And I was jumping at every opportunity I could to help them whenever they needed an extra player for testing. And along with uh, learning a new WebGL library, they really had to manage and optimize the WebSocket connections for their real-time gameplay. So without much further ado, here's Aerostorm. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, our team, which consists of James, Alex, and myself, Nishant, are extremely excited to present to you our capstone project, Aerostorm. Aerostorm is an online multiplayer archery game inspired by the popular Steam game Towerfall. Each game can be played between two to four players, with the main goal being to shoot down your enemies and be the last one standing. Every player is equipped with five arrows and can die by either getting shot by an arrow or running into spikes. Power-ups are gained by acquiring treasure chests that spawn randomly and provide players with the ability to fly or even turn invisible. Arrowstorm is built using a web graphics library called Phaser with multiplayer functionality that is added by a socket IO and a backend that is made up of Node, Express, and Postgres. Having never quite built a game like this before, the first unique challenge that we ran into was creating lifelike arrow functionality. Um, each player can shoot an arrow from eight different angles, and each angle gives the arrow its own unique trajectory. So to accomplish that, what we did was change the angle of the arrow every frame, and once it comes to a stop, players can even pick it up. So to talk more about the multiplayer functionality, here's James. Thanks, Nish. Aerostorm is a multiplayer game, so we needed a way for players to connect to each other, which is why we decided to use WebSockets. When a new user connects to our site, the server establishes a persistent connection to them. And when a user creates or joins a game, the server puts them in a room for that game. The server also tracks a list of all games, including data, like whether that game is available to join. Once all users in a game room are ready, the server sends them a message to start. Once the game is running, at every frame, each client sends to the server information like where they are, where they're aiming, and are they firing an arrow. The server then relays this information to each other client where it gets rendered locally. There is some latency due to the fact that it takes time for information to, tra information to travel to the server and from the server. So as much as possible is calculated on the client side. For example, the server will tell a client that an arrow was fired, but then it's up to the client to track and render that arrow's trajectory. Meanwhile, the server handles things that all clients need to share, like random numbers, the score, and when to start a new game state, such as the kill cam that plays at the end of each round. The kill cam, which plays the last two seconds of the previous round at the end of each round, is possible because since each, um, since each client is sending data at every frame to the server, the server can store this data as a history array. When the round is over, the, his the server slices the last two seconds of the history and sends it to each client to get rendered through a dummy update function. Now, here's Alex to talk more about the map editor. Another feature we decided to implement was a map editor. When we first started making maps for Aerostorm, we had to use JavaScript to define every block we placed. Meaning we, had to, meaning we had to envision the map in our head as we were building. It was clear that the experience of creating maps could be improved by seeing a visual representation of the maps as we were building them. We also thought users would enjoy building maps to their own specifications. Our solution to these issues was to build a point and click interface. Just place any of the available building blocks on the map as you see fit. Choose an initial starting point for each of the four players and the treasure chest. Give the map a name and click the Create Map button. The visual representation of the map is encoded to JSON and uploaded to our database. When you start a new game and select a map, the JSON representation of the map is parsed and the map for the current game is created. Working on Aerostorm has been a great experience for our team. If you would like to experience Aerostorm for yourself, go to aerostorm.tech and give it a shot. Thanks. That was very, very well made. Um, another one, another one of the few projects that I feel like I just don't want to play because <laughs> I'm not going to get any other work done. It definitely seems like a classic in the making. I think. Um, one of our other instructors was telling me about Towerfall being like an extremely well-balanced game. Yeah. It seems like it's um, something I'm excited just to start playing. This game is a lot of fun because it's just so easy to just get started, have a quick round or two. And, you know, they, they usually aren't that quick because you usually play 10 of them. You don't really want to stop. But it's, it's also a ton of fun to actually really quickly make your own map and try out different ideas.
yeah, and, the map uh, editor, mm -hmm. the art design, all very well done. Yeah, all the the I sprites were actually custom made too. So oh, really? I recognize well. the uh, Final Fantasy mage dude. It was based off of that, but they okay. made them themselves. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> based off of it. 